I'm 95% sure I can play this game with a controller. Cool. That'll make things easy. Uh, this game uses an autosave feature. Got headphones in though, so. Yep, it works. No sweat mode. What? <sighs> There's a no sweat mode. There's actually an easy mode. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Ground forms up under his feet as it point the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Finds his lifelong friend just lying in the road. What I'm doing my narration. Well, it's a touching reunion. I know you can. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. In the calamity. That a survivor? No, ma'am. It's a gas fella. Forced out from underground. Kid pops him good. Starts to feel his bruises, though. Kid just rages for a while. See, there it is. An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods, but it'll have to do. Gotta hold her still to spin up the chamber. Kids worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. School of squirts tunnels up around them. Must have fled here from the mines. <laughs> he sets foot inside one of Selandia's famous watering holes. Inside's old Rondi, the bartender. The calamity got him for his drinking did. Rondi always wanted his ashes scattered here. Then Kid finds his trusty shield. But just as he's getting a handle on it, the security takes him for a petty thief. Special delivery, gas fellas.
windbags start turning up for last call. out in front of the kid. Them windbags are playing for keeps. Kid sees the weight of the bastion out the window. It's a bit of a drop. He gets a good look at things on his way down. From the narrator's point of view, yeah, I understand. He lands on top of a breaker's bow, and it ain't broke. Kid spies a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. Um, this bow is overpowered. What's that thing? The kid pockets a memento from a breaker, once the fastest man in the land. Good news is the emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they aim it for the kid. Keep pressing Y, trying to break stuff. Why is the heal button? Picks up a few pointers from a dusty old tome. He's a mighty fast learner. Find the distillery, right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. The arsenal's where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. Nice. Stick with the bow, I like it. One sip of the spirits in that distillery, and the kid'll feel like a new man. Oh, hey. Some of them squirts birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins.
one was Maud, the tutor. Once taught the kid good manners. He never used them, though. That's in, uh, uh, that line is used in the League of Legends voiceover pack. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Once taught the kids good manners. Or the kid good manners. He didn't use them. Though. I think it says it right after he kills someone. <laughs> And then he falls to his death. Oh, okay. I'm just fooling. An old fairy bard sends the kid on his way. That was awesome, though. The bastion's real and close then now. He falls to his death. I'm just kidding. A chunk of alloy, smell of barley and spoiled blueberries fills the air. Scumbags. The kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did. Better watch his step. He finds the core to the wharf district. He steals the city's heart. Might as well. It has a feeling you better get a move on. The place is starting to fall. See that core kid took was the only thing making this particular rock stay afloat. Kid just keeps running. needs to go. That's cool. I like Now this. the kid sees something stranger still. Like His mind races. See, in the demo, if I remember right, you pick up the core, and then that's it. It doesn't tell you what happens, because this is completely new, I know that. I don't remember if I have to run through the gauntlet in the demo or not. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. We talk for a spell. There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest, enough to point the way to the cores. All I tell him is to set that core is on the monument there, then watch. Does he find another? He does, he finds me. Oh, okay. And just like that, the bastion comes alive. Starts growing again, growing stronger. Kid's gotta put its power to good use. Now the bastion can send them even farther into the wild unknown.
kid ponders what to build. Oh, hey. Makes time to sample spirits from my personal supply. Where whiskey has no scent, but tastes like a peppered boot heel, it's not for everyone. A peppered boot heel. Kid don't know what's out there waiting for him. The Skyway. Now the kid can ride the wind in the distant lands. The Breakers used to come here for target practice. Used to play a little game. See who could bust the most targets in the fewest shots. He's focused. He's armed, and he's off. The perfect shot just happens in a flash. Kid ain't had enough of the breaker's barracks. Takes practice, and a mighty strong bow helps too. Five shots are fewer. Yeah, I'm not going for it. He returns with some of the materials we need. Ain't always much to say. Can't be too careful these days. <laughs> I just jumped to my dad. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. Ought to be a core he... down one of these twisted streets. I love but how he which gets one? into the world. <laughs> <laughs> he heads for the biggest dump in town, Scumbag Alley. Some scumbag still feeding off the city's own trash. Uh, okay. So 
the slime is actually and a There he is. The oldest scumbag of them all. Gershel. The calamity ain't done much for Gershel's sunny disposition. Shame old Gershel can't float like when he was a young fella. No core, no surprise. Like the gas fellas are hiding it from him. Are you serious? The rest of the path is gone for good, and his city crest won't bring it back. Okay. He heads for the squirt steps. Won't be no field trip this time. He's come back and digest just about anything. Oh. Except for this. It's quick for slicing and light enough to throw. <laughs> So there is a limit to speed, but it's still pretty fast. It's almost as quick as I can press the button. They say even the most rambunctious squirts can be tamed. No sign of the core here. At least the kid got something for his trouble. Squirts just don't know when to quit. So left or right? for the east side, oh. where windbags used to keep the local forge. I felt. Somehow that old forge is still standing. Oh, what? Inside the forge, he can fine-tune those instruments of his. Something heavy, something stringy, something sharp, and something fancy. Ah! Something... Edge, 20% crit chance. Or attacks will cripple foes and do damage over time. The little Zolwood oil on that blade shines like a light. I can pick one, I understand now. With a good length of Miska, that bow's like new again. Something heavy, I don't have enough. Okay. Core ain't here neither. So he's got to guess again. Jeez, you sent me in the wrong direction. Odd place to find the likes of Percy the Snitch. Never much cared for that big wide grin of his.
Now! Up north is where the gas for the foreman used to live, tending to his flock. Gas fellas all dress alike. Kids wondering the same thing. And there it is. But it's locked down tight in an alloy cage. A blustery old foreman's keeping his fellas in check. Almost like he's showboating for the crowd. Now there's a new marshal in town. He hears the whole place groan, but it's too tough to fall. Kid's ready to go, and his ticket out is right where he started. He comes back, just like I knew he would. The core hums in his pack, the monument's calling for it. Kid does it again, only fair he decides what we build next. An arsenal. Stores weapons and secret skills. Forge. Arsenal. The Bastion's a place of peace, but we can hold our own if we have to. effective as the fancier stuff. The windbags used to be all right, then the calamity took the floor out from under them. Picked up traces of other cores while the kid was out. wonder how that technology is supposed to work. It launches me into the air. In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on a squirt. Okay. Oh. Oh. Did you see that? I just did. You killed those things. Of all the plans to survive the calamity, 
It had to be stat weeds. I don't like stab weed. Did you just call me stab weed? There's a core, he figures it ought to be deeper down. Core stuck inside one of those fancy cages. Some of the stuff lying around is downright dangerous. Throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? Quite a bit, as it turns out. The cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All Kid can do is wait. Shipments start falling in. Squirt's born bad. Some spring to the kid's defense. Judging by the movement of the cage, it's gonna take a little while. Scumbags don't take kindly to interlopers. Even some gas fellas take his corner. Birdie pop that mean old foreman. That's gonna be weird and difficult to keep track of. At this rate, maybe five more minutes. Maybe thirty. Hard to tell. Territorial around the core. And then a ship and a free sample shows up. It ain't all bad, as the kid finds some spices from the motherland, tax free. Spices from the motherland, tax free. One thing's for sure that cage is awful heavy. left and the core goes free. Ten, nine, eight, seven, the give or take a few seconds. Finally, the core's within reach. And done. He's got it. Just gotta get to the nearest barge.
I took a squirt with me. A squirt with me. I still remember the look on his face after that one. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. It packs a special surprise in every one of those arrows. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. It was good living here for a while. Windbag Ranch was built for gathering squirt extract and copious supply. Ain't nothing more healthful. Some folks showed up to make a fast buck. Still others use the place to test their finest blades. all of them down soon enough. Under 90 seconds. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Kid comes back from Windbag Ranch smelling good and ripe. Machetes are so quick, you gotta keep a good grip on them. See, I'd probably have a better chance of it now because now I can throw two machetes at once. 
<coughs> but that's okay. I'm not gonna try again. Couples uh, used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure though. But then somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. Fragments of the old world rain from the sky. Well, the path ain't exactly open to visitors no more. Security is all fired up. Quick and careful is the only way to go. Stray valuables are lying everywhere. The kid thinks twice about risking his high for him, though. the winds in the old days. We can do it again, but the question is, who else could have taken the core? Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Tough break. Unlike the kid, that core ain't coming back. I know they used to ship live munitions down the path. Find time to find them. He's wires to toss those things plenty far away. Gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. In all this toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question Who else could have survived the calamity? Why did the kid survive the calamity? So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. We could always see the stars. We just never could reach them, no matter how high we built. What is something burnt for? Weapons I don't have yet. Okay. No place better than Trapper Shingle for learning to tread light and shoot straight. Trappers had to tread real carefully, or else take a nasty fall. They train themselves by clearing out the targets while not clearing out the floor.
Any good trapper knows never to take a step till the time is right. got something extra to give him an edge. Sixty-four targets. I was damn close. So I'm gonna go upgrade the bow or the tr the the to thing. To think a rickety place like the shingle survived, and so little else did. And start over. Arsenal. No, need this. Double clip size or half reload speed? Or double reload speed? Turns out those old bones still have some spark in them. Let's try that. I can't get both, sadly. Kid decides to keep working his aim and footwork on the shingle. Best time to pick a new spot was when swapping magazines. Seven. About as close as I'm gonna get, I think. Oh well. I do. Who is it? I don't know who that is. So, give me a moment. Just say that they just finished the game and that it's um, an awesome story. That I completely agree. I love the story. Give me just a second, and I'll turn on chat so I can uh, actually see your messages. And Mr. The... It's supposed to be just ranked up to a casual. So. Yeah, I don't know who that is I don't either. Know that's just another... That's someone who's... I don't know. I think he he died as soon as he loaded into the stream because he's never said anything and he's been there uh, since I first saw him. 
Like Same with the, the guy, how you eat buns. Yeah. yeah, he watches all of my streams. Never says anything. He's in chat when I'm not even streaming. Which is cool. The but dead welcome weird. him with open arms. Oh. The calamity took everybody after all. Kid sees it plain, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. But yeah, so far I love the game. Uh, as the stream says, this is my first playthrough. These play folks through. never saw the calamity coming. I've played but the demo. Someone did. Someone close. But that's it. It sees him there agape in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions after all. Time for answers. The Tundra brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy didn't make it. The Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Sr., Grady Jr., they didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? survived as well. Kid does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. The survivor. Okay. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. We fought the Ura decades ago. But that was then. Things are different between us now. His name is Rox. Huh. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. The cores, they remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. I don't know what either of them are. The memorial. Here, kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. Oh, cool. The valediction. 
Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now. And the Orchard core is long gone too. He gives that old bull what's coming to him. Yeah, I can't break it. Okay. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. Piff makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Then Piff lights up like a rodeo. Ain't easy punching through his hide. Kid breaks him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods, or tell him off? <clears throat> In order, foes shall grow quicker to move and to strike. Piv. Make foes stronger. 10% XP bonus. Sure, why not? Kid decides to press his luck. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Piff put a scare in him. Pith's trial, and he's richer for it. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. I didn't realize. 
realized I could do a power shot with my Thomas. That's cool. Kid ain't found a core, but at least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. Liura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. The accused always got a fair shake in Ceylandia. Some used to take the bullhead trial. Survive the trial without taking a scratch, you'd walk away a free man. Second, you gotta always watch your back. Third, ain't no godlike bull up there gonna save you. Is back in session for the kid. Old ritual for when folks believe there was this godlike bull watching over him. Ooh. Okay, so I can't. Had to make do with nothing but a shield.
knew when to just step aside and let things go. Okay. Well, a kid always wanted to compete in the bullhead trial. The Gravers, the arm of justice, they seemed unstoppable. There's only one way in the Cinderbrick Fort. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone, but now the fort's crawling with windbags. They've been left to freeze, or starve, or face the kid. Bags young and old keep fighting for the fort. <laughs> Le 
least the marshals left the kid a parting gift. Something the windbags just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through their greasy hides. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want is a warm place to stay and a decent meal. The calamity drove the windbags topside. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. Could have been minding the business underground like in the old days. Get on notice. Windbags can't use the martial supplies, but the kid sure can. He stashes the marshal's prize, goes back to something more his style. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame him for wanting it, though. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground.
kid's stash of grenades is their form of things get even worse. Security's plane gone haywire. Windbags gummed up the works. It ain't afraid of getting burned. They trap the kid in the middle of the fort's parade grounds. Then they bring out Glutus and Glandon, and all their scumbag uncles. They got something to gain, and only their sorry hides to lose. Kid takes down Glutus. Or maybe it was Glandon. The other big fella soon joins his brother, wherever they are now. The windbags finally get the message. He'd used to dream of getting a marshal's badge, but not like this. The Skyway is a welcome sight after all that. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrook Fort. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. The marshals seem like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. The past. Only good thing ever come out of the past is history.
past catches up with a kid. Hardly had a moment's rest since all this started. Fair to say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. He never knew his old man, but he had his mama to take care of frail thing with pure white hair like his. Having his mama's hair did the kid no favors while he was growing up, but he learned to hold his own out there. School ain't working out, so the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money. Thanks to folks like the kid, the walls kept Ceylonia safe from whatever's out there. The elements, the aura, you name it. Once the kid done his time, he hurried on home. Turns out his mama's time was done too. The city had nothing for him. The money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found, either. So what did the kid do? Why he went right on back to the walls for another five years? In the history of Ceylandia, nobody has ever volunteered for a second shift on the walls. How 
while there, kid learned to fend for himself. Learned to build. Learned to break. In time, the kid earned good standing with the marshals. They trusted him to scout out farther than anybody. One night, on one of his expeditions, the ground beneath him shuddered, cracked, and split apart. He saw nothing where the world used to be. The calamity happened. Just like that. All the kid had to work with was his hammer and the clothes on his back. Through twisted streets, he ran with nothing but the city crest and an old stranger's voice to guide him. Finally arrived at Ceylandia's vaunted safe haven. He and no one else.
But then, all he got was more thankless work from a man who ain't even asked his name. Sure, I may be the one who dreamt up the walls and the bastion, but the kid made him real, not me. I'd like to say I'll never forget him, or what he's doing, what he's done. I surely would. That was cool. I liked it. That was... That was a great way to cover his history. Kid says hello, but Zolf's lost in thought. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the Marshals kept a wary eye on him. No idea, but hey. The Breakers. Ain't no one can outrun them. Or their arrows. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. The lost and found. Here, kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. some fragments and the bastion makes it good as new. Sink in nice and deep. Now he can shoot that fang repeater all day long. Oh. 
points just don't get any sharper than that. The Langston River flowed free and wild till the Calamity drank it all up. Maybe all that water just grew wings and flew off. something I'm level three it's time to go to the bar I'm old enough now If you're feeling low, count on the buttery flavor of our own Bastion bourbon. I don't know if you caught it, but one of the drinks I'm, I have carried around with me is called Stabs Stabstineth. No, I didn't Absineth, yeah. but Stabstineth. Yeah. And when I get attacked, I automatically retaliate. Well, the river ain't retaliate. coming back just by talking about it. All right. Riverbank swarming with windbags. They're so bent on finding the core, they hardly notice the kid. Lucky for him, a certain famous ferry barge is still afloat. Weeping Millie. She sends some squirts crying home as she leaves the port. Maybe Nellie knows the way to the core. Maybe she can slip right past all the clamor on the coast. Or maybe not. The security skiff pulls up port side. Nellie's just another windbag to those guns. Just then, the windbags notice who she's sailing with. They try to cut her off. They try to slow her down. Try to knock her out. Well, Weepin' Nelly tries harder. Try as she might, though, she hits a snag. Kids gotta help her get untangled. Favors for favors. She picked a good spot for a break, cause the core is right there. I'm not liking the fang repeater. I'm not liking the weapon I've got. It's not what? No, no, this, this one, 
Okay, that was the uh, breaker bow, and you charge it, and it does a lot of damage. This one just shoots quickly. Then the kid hears an unusual sound, like a hundred flapping wings. Peckers. They've been watching us every move. They had their own eyes on the core. But why? Well, kid ain't got time to think it over just yet. Would you kindly fuck on off out here? He Look. finds a weeping Nelly raring to go. Oh, Turns out she's got a special surprise for when the oh, waters get Oh, those are rough. friendly. God damn, you scared me. Ah, oh, light him on fire. Die, birdie, die. She's gonna need a little help with all them peckers. Traffic things think they're king of the roost now. The rest of us only wish we could fly in times like these. Security skiffs keep on coming to starboard side. Don't seem to care what they shoot, as long as they hit something. Windbags get an even better idea. Kid almost falls again. He takes a hard hit, but he ain't finished. They aim to smash Weeping Nelly to splinters. Shoes them off, knowing they'll be back. Know how many times Kid nearly fell off the bar back there? Four times. Of course. You know how many times the kid nearly fell off the barge? Four times. Yeah, that's actually yeah. Now listen <laughs> close. You should remember this next part. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Used to take an enterprising man or plain old fool to venture out that far. The city was the most beautiful place in the world. We all knew that. But on the other hand, some folks just yearn to see the things they're told they can't. And that's why you go to Prosper Bluff, ain't it? There the kid hears something he ain't heard in a long while. How's it go again? Oh. Yeah, that's the one. One of my co-workers actually has 
the soundtrack for this game. And we were listening to it at work, and I'm like, why does that sound like Bastion? You know, like the voice for Bastion. And he's like, well, it is. It's like, it is? He's like, yeah, it's the same guy. This is the soundtrack. I'm like, oh. Well, shit. Because before that, we were listening to, like... I don't even know what the artist was. Stab you with your own feathers. kind of chuckled about it, though, and asked if uh, Donald Trump had any hand in making this song. The whole build-a-wall thing is what got me. <laughs> He's like, uh, no, Donald Trump was not interested in politics when Bastion came out. Like, but maybe. You could frickin' die, birdies. I do like the song, though. Oh, dick. Well, no point explaining what happens next, right? Suffice it to say, kid ain't coming home empty-handed. And besides, it's like the song goes. celebrated when the kid got back, didn't we? Zolf never thought he'd see a fellow her again. We become fast friends. Calamity has that effect on people. 
But there was more to be done. There was one last core to find. A scientific journal written in Zolf's native tongue. He learned so much from it. Too much. If only I'd known half the secrets of the Calamity were tucked away in that book. I'd have worked to translate it right away. Most of the Ura never got a taste of Ceylandia's fine goods. Unless they were born and raised in the city like Zia here. Sure, the world's all gone to pieces farther than the eye can see. But leave it to this gal to point out the amazing view. Girl tried to run away from home one time. But the marshals stopped that, didn't they? So many secrets in there and she can't even read it. Her father's own journal. Kid surprised when I tell him there's only one core left. I shouldn't have believed it either. Behold, the Pantheon. A Kobe. Oh, I can turn them on. Oh. That's cool. I can turn them all on if I want. All at once. We track the final core beyond the city to the wilds. The final core? Come on, the I wild unknown. Place can eat a man alive. Place is so raw, even the calamity couldn't cook it. Not all of it. Know what's better than having a slinger pistol in a fight? Having two. Oh, yes. Savage things lurking at every turn. Oh, fuck. Pin cushions ain't the worst of it either. Good thing pin cushions can't see where they're shooting. Pecker's got the core, like they're building a bastion of the rain. The welcoming committee scrambles to attention. Didn't expect the kid so soon. They shouldn't have let their guard down. Getting that core was one thing. Getting out's gonna be another. He digs his way out of the clearing, but the wilds won't let him go without a fight. Wallflowers survive the calamity. It toughened them up. Same goes for the kid. Best take it real slow when the pin cushions are afoot. Slinger Jawson's old outpost is all that's left of him. Don't ever turn your back on a pin cushion. 
kids roused up half the wild by now. Then Kid gets the feeling he's being watched. Not by me, by a lunkhead. And lunkheads ain't fond of two-legged animals. Hit him anywhere but the hindquarters and they only make him mad. The Calamity must have scrambled their eggs. Hardly any signs of the old Jawson camp. already reclaimed this place. Pow gives a wallflower a taste of its own medicine. He's anxious to get back. After all, he's got the final core. So His journey's over, right? Okay. Well, no. It ain't. Not by a long shot. Kid knows something's up when we ain't there to give a warm welcome. See, Zolf and I were just wrapping up a heated discussion. Zolf can barely muster the words. The calamity failed, he says. But I will not. And with that, Zolf leaves us here. Alone. Zolf cursed the city, cursed the bastion, cursed me, said he was going home. When Zolf got through reading that journal, he just snapped, started smashing up the monument till I tried to stop him. Zolf banged up the monument pretty bad. But there's a way to put her back together. The shards. We're gonna need all of them to nurse the Bastion back to health. Takes a lot of moving pieces to make a dependable sidearm. Finders keepers. I tried to let the kid down gently. This is the bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. Well, I think that that is a good place to end it for now. Because it's 1 a.m. and I am going to get some sleep.
but I'll be sure to play more of this tomorrow. See you then.